right, so this is a, a two-body system um, that's being pulled around a, a pulley. And so again, we're going to make the assumption that we've made in the past that this pulley is massless, it's frictionless, the rope is uh, not able to be stretched, all these other things, it's a massless rope, and air friction is negligible. So setting all that aside, um, the mass on the surface is 20 kilograms, the hanging mass is 30 kilograms, and the static friction and the kinetic friction between the mass on the incline is stated, okay? 0 0.03 and 0 0.01, respectively. Um, and we're sitting at 30 degrees. Uh, for the purposes of significant figures, because somebody's gonna burn me on this later, I'll say it's 30.0 degrees, okay? Just so we have three sig figs. I know who you are. Um, I'd like to figure out the acceleration of this system. So that's, that's what the name of this game is going to be. Find the acceleration of the system. So I've got to go through and I've got to repeat some things that we've done before, but we've got some extra stuff to do as well, okay? So I'm going to ask you to pull out your calculators and I want you to engage in this. There are some things that you need to find, okay? I'm going to label up some values and I want you to find them. So certainly there is an FG. I'm going to be calling upon people to give me some of the values in a few minutes. And that if you want to work along at my pace and talking it through, then you can just write it as I go, and you can give me some of the values as we go, okay? So we've got FG, and going along with FG, there should be the component that's perpendicular to the surface. So we're going to call that FG perpendicular, which of course completes a right angle triangle. I'll actually draw out the right angle triangle, although I usually don't for my own uh, illustrations. And we have an FG parallel, which is the same length as this side of the triangle and parallel to the surface, just like that side of the triangle. So we've got an FG parallel. We've also got a force due to, and you know what, I'm just gonna call it F subscript little f right now because I haven't decided yet if this is gonna be static friction or kinetic friction and I'm going to have a normal force. Now we've only addressed one object. We've got to deal with the other object now. This guy is going to have a force of one acting on two, and this guy is going to have a force of gravity. So if there's a force of one on two, what else has, has to be there that maybe I didn't think of yet? Sen? force of two on one. So not only is there friction resisting this puppy, there's also force of two on one resisting that guy going down the slide. Okay. Well, what should I do first? Help me out with my game plan. Do you think I should tackle mass one first or mass two first? Where should I start with this little thing? Will we? Yeah? Yeah, I would say working towards finding a normal force for mass one. Uh, even just starting with the perpendicular gravitational and, per and parallel gravitational forces would be a great start, okay? And actually, I would recommend that for any situation like this. Always try and find the perpendicular and parallel forces uh, due to gravity on the object on the incline first, okay? So let's hash it out. Fg perpendicular is going to be Fg times cosine of theta. And I didn't actually find Fg yet. That's okay, we can do mass times acceleration due to gravity times cosine theta. So 20 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared times cos of 30. Has anybody got that value already? Sixty-nine point nine one newtons. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, we want to keep it unrounded for a little bit. Um, and 
fg parallel is going to be the same sort of deal. We're going to say that it's fg times sine of theta, or mass times acceleration due to gravity times sine theta. Did you get it already, Sam? Is it just 98.1 because sine 30 is a magic angle? Okay. 98.1 newtons. Beautiful. All right. Now, the recommendation was I, my recommendation was finding FG per perpendicular and FG parallel first, but the follow up recommendation from the class was to find F, F normal. In this case, we're just going to recognize that F normal is equal but opposite. In, ma in magnitude to FG perpendicular. And really it's just because we're, we are looking at this scenario and, and observing that this is the case. There's no extra applied forces here. It's not a universal rule, just like it wasn't a universal rule before that FG was always equal to F normal. But in this case, it happens to be true. So we're gonna go with it. So we say F normal is going to be equal to 169, at least magnitude of F normal, will be equal to 169 0.91 newtons. And the recommendation from there would be what? What should I what should I find now? There's actually going to be two possibilities here. Either this system is moving or it ain't. Right? That's kind of the options here. Either it's going somewhere or it isn't. So, how do I want to deal with that? I thought Sen put his hand up, but I wasn't sure. Sorry? Oh, I still got to deal with mass two. Yeah, that's true. Um, but once once I deal with FG for mass two, we can call it FG two. Okay. Let's find that. Then I got to fig figure out if I'm going to be dealing with either static friction or kinetic friction for the block on the on the uh, surface. So we can find FG two as well. Why not? Although I feel like we're just putting off the inevitable. FG2, so 30 kilograms times 9.81. Oh. What was it? 294.3 newtons. Okay, that sounds good. So now we have FG2, we've got FG perpendicular, we've got normal force, we've got FG parallel. We actually have FG2, but since it's not really a part of the free body diagram, it's, it's been taken care of by FG perpendicular and FG parallel. I'm not gonna bother checking that guy off. I'll just cover it with my finger and pretend it's not there for a second. Um, force due to friction. Like I said, we got to deal with whether it's kinetic friction or static friction. And you know, maybe I was a little bit hasty in making my force due to friction point in that direction. Does it have to point in that direction? No, this, this mass actually might drag the system towards the right. It might not be that the thing on the incline wins this tug of war, right? So let's see for a second. If force due to gravity uh, due to mass two is 294.3 newtons, and force due to gravity parallel due to mass one is 98.1 newtons. Who's going to win this tug of war? Mass two. Oh, baby. So I am going to call to the right positive because I can see just by looking at these two forces that mass two is winning the tug of war. It's got to if this thing's going to move. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to move because friction might still win. Friction might still make it not go anywhere. So that's what we have to figure out. So I want to find the friction force on this, this uh, first object. I'm going to find it two ways. I'm going to find static friction first. So that'll be mu s times f normal. And mu s is 0 0.03 and f normal is 169.91. So if somebody could just plug those guys into their calculator and let me know what you get. I'm running out of space, so I'm not going to write out all the numbers. 0 0.03 times 169.91 newtons. Oh, my 
screen turned off. Okay. Three. Five point. What was it? Zero nine seven three. Newtons. Now, we don't have to do all the math here. What we could do is check to see the difference between these guys. Is the difference between these guys greater than the static friction force? Is this thing going to move? Yeah. This thing is, is definitely overcoming static friction. So I don't need to deal with static friction. That was my check. Is it going to move? Absolutely. And I actually know now that it's going to tend towards the right. I could call this the right, I could call this the left. And now I should really calculate the kinetic friction. 0 0.0100 times 169.91 newtons. Now this one's a, an easy one to calculate. What's, what's a one hundredth of 169.91? Anybody do the calculation? Yes? Oh, thank you. All right. 1.6991 newtons uh, is the kinetic friction force, which is like barely anything compared to this system, right? Like this, this is like a bulldozer of a system, and there's this wee little friction force that's resisting it. But, you know, maybe somebody greased up the slide or something. I don't know. Um, this, I mean, if we want to paint a story for this, maybe somebody tied a brick around a pulley and wrapped the, the, rope, the other end of the rope around some kid's waist on a slide and just checked to see what would happen if they dropped the brick. I don't know what this thing's all about. But, hey, whatever is happening here, this thing is definitely sliding, and it's going to tend towards the right, okay? So let's, uh, let's lay it out for ourselves. We want a free body diagram for this system. That's what I want anyways. So I want to draw it out linearly. I've got mass 1 and I've got mass 2. Mass 2 is going to tend to get pulled to the right by gravity. Okay, I'm, just, I'm just turning this into sort of a linear system so I have to think about things going around corners. So Fg2 is equal to um, 294.3 newtons. This object has force to gravity parallel, we called it, Fg parallel. And you could call it Fg parallel for mass 1 and make this subscript go on and on and on forever. Um, but it is 98.1 newtons. And we have to decide what direction was positive and what direction was negative. So we said that to the right was positive and to the left was negative. So this is a positive value and this is a negative value. Now there is a rule combined, er, connecting these two, we just figured out the kinetic friction force, which of course is going to resist the system's tendency to move towards the right. The friction force on the first object will be towards the left. So Fk is equal to 1.6991 newtons. You could call it Fk1, but since there's no friction on mass 2, I guess it doesn't really matter. But Fk1. 169.91 newton. Oh, sorry, 1.6991 uh, newtons. Should be is negative? what's that? Should be negative. Oh, you're right. It should be negative. Yeah. Are there any other forces that should be acting on this system? I know that we labeled up force of one on two and force of two on one in the initial diagram, but is that going to change the the net force for the system? I don't think so. Those are internal forces, right? Now, if somebody asks us what the tension on the rope is. That's a different problem, but we've done enough of those problems. Uh, I don't want to bring it back up now, but we're solving a different problem right now. The problem we were trying to find was the acceleration of this system. So there's no other external forces that are going to be in impacting this system. So now I think we should find the F net for the system. F net for the system is equal to FK1 plus FG parallel. And you know what the heck, I'm going to call it FG parallel for mass 1 even though there is no Fg parallel for mass 2, plus Fg2. 
And if we plug in all of our values, we'll get the net force for the system. So I'll, I'll ask you guys to, to get ahead on that one. Want to second that that uh, motion? One ninety-four point five one newtons. Does anybody have something that contradicts it? No. Okay. So one hundred ninety-four point five one newtons sounds like a good net force. And if I know the net force, then I should be able to find the acceleration of the system. So I'm just going to move to this other blank space because I left myself too much space on this page. Acceleration equals F net for the system divided by the mass of the system. Now in this case, the system isn't just one mass or the other mass, it's both masses combined. So I'm talking about F net for the system divided by mass one plus mass two. So we can't forget that there are two masses in play in this problem. Or 169.91 newtons divided by, uh, the one mass was 20 kilograms and the other was 30 kilograms. So a, a net mass of 50.0 kilograms. The acceleration for the system should be, well, what's 194.51 divided by 50? What is it? 3.89. Okay, meters per second squared. Beautiful. So we can get the acceleration for the system, and of course that's in the positive direction we already determined that when we were defining the positive direction as the direction in which it's going to travel, which one won the tug of war. Um, so like I say, we could go back, and now that we know the acceleration of the system, and I'm not going to calculate it with you because this is a problem that we've done before, so I'm not going to reteach the topic, but we could figure out what force of two on one is and force of one on two is using free body diagrams and by calculating the F net for each individual mass. We're not going to do it right now, but I just want to point out that we could step back and do that. 